Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a zero waste anti-haul specifically targeted at plastics. So um, let's just get right into it. This video is going to be all about um, the plastics that I see on a regular basis that I just don't understand or I can't comprehend how they're still being used um, in day-to-day -day life by so many people because of what we now understand about plastics and how damaging it is. Um, these are the things that I think that everybody should just eradicate from their lives and let's just move on from it. Okay, so number one is fishing nets. So fishing nets are actually 46%, that's nearly half of the ocean's plastic pollution. And even after it's been abandoned, it's called ghost gear and it's still continuing to fish. So it'll be catching the fishes and killing them even after it's, after it's been abandoned. So they're just dying in the ocean. Um, so it's radically reducing the fish population by the millions. It's killing millions of fishes every year and it's really damaging our wildlife population. Experts actually suggest that within the next 30 years, we'll see more plastic in the ocean than fishes, which is an incredibly disturbing thought. And um, the second most plastic polluting thing in the oceans is actually fishing gear again, other fishing gear that isn't fishing nets. So we just need to stop fishing. The second thing is cleaning products, like multi cleaning products. Like I go into some people's houses and I see like a cleaning product for the bathroom, a cleaning product for the kitchen, a cleaning product for tiles and for glass and for floors and for tables and just, just have one cleaning product. Um, the, it's all just marketing. They want you to buy more cleaning products because it gives them a greater profit. Um, it's understandable why they, why they would do that, but we need to understand that we don't need that. We don't need a separate thing for lime scale or for grease or for you know, all the cleaning products that uh, we see in the houses. Not only are the chemicals incredibly damaging to wildlife, to the fishes again, being poured into our oceans, which we then use to wash and to drink and um, to grow our foods. Um, it's it's a waste of money and it's always in plastic bottles I find as well. So instead I suggest making your own one singular multi-purpose cleaner. The one that I make, um, which I will um, put up here and also link in the description is my homemade um, cleaning product. It's two or three ingredients. I mean, the third ingredient is kind of like unnecessary. It's just nice for the smell. It's basically a two ingredient multi-purpose um, cleaning product. Um, it's not damaging, it's not toxic, so if you have pets or children or plants, it's totally fine. Um, and it does a better job than uh, any cleaning product that I've ever used um, otherwise. And it's really cheap, it's super affordable, it's like pennies. The third thing is plastic packaged foods, and this is specifically um, things that already have their natural skin, like bananas and apples and oranges, and I just... I feel like this problem is actually getting worse. Like when I go into supermarkets now, I see like um, something like half of a cucumber. And so now that it's got an open end, they feel like they have to put it in um, one in a plastic box that is then sealed in a plastic bag. It's like multiple layers of plastic. <sighs> it's ridiculous. The fourth thing is cling film or cellophane if you're in America. Um, I just don't see the point in it. Um, I don't believe I've ever used it. Um, I think that people use it to like seal their food if they haven't finished it. Um, just use Tupperware, just get some glass Tupperware or sometimes I'll have something left on a plate and I'll just put a bowl on top, put that in the fridge. You, you really don't need to use cling film. It's completely irrelevant. Number five is plastic applicator tampons. Um, I mean, that plastic is just absurd. It's this plastic, which as we know, lasts forever because plastic, even though it gets broken down into smaller and smaller pieces, uh, the pieces just get smaller and then it's a microplastic and then that's on the planet forever and it's really damaging. Um, it's forever 
and then for something that is three seconds to use it and completely unnecessary because maybe you don't want to get your finger dirty you can't be bothered to wash it uh, it hurts because I actually used to use these um, mainly the cardboard applicator things but still the applications are the applicators are just um, I mean they upset me on so many levels one I think that like us as women need to get to know our bodies better and um, I think it's a good thing to experience ourselves um, when we're on our periods but that is like a video for another time but just the fact that these get used for like two or three seconds and then they get tossed sometimes actually down the toilet I've seen these down the toilet which is don't put them down the toilet and they're in the bin and then they're in landfill and in the oceans and it's just completely unnecessary and if you think about how many a woman would go through just in one month let alone in the year after 12 cycles and then in a lifetime if they continue to use them it's just astronomical especially considering at least half of our population is female and in the western world there are millions of women who are using these <sighs> you know my advice is just going to be get yourself a menstrual cup. I believe they are the most wonderful thing made for women for um, period products. And obviously if you can't use a menstrual cup for whatever reason, you don't feel comfortable with it, there are also reusable pads that you can use or even period underwear. There's no reason to use tampons, especially the plastic applicator ones. Number six is the styrofoam nuggets. I still see these sometimes. I feel like they're kind of outdated. They used to be very popular um, a decade or two ago and I'm seeing less and less of them, which is good, but I still, when I see them, I've seen some recently, something got sent to me and I had like a handful of these styrofoam nuggets in and they were completely like, I don't even know why they were there. I feel like there are so many better options now and um, recycled paper, brown paper, even like Amazon packaging is better than these styrofoam nuggets. Like at least it's brown paper and uh, cloth bags. I don't know, I just no more styrofoam nuggets. Number seven is plastic versions of like non-plastic, traditionally non-plastic items like kids toys that were always made of wood usually. Um, now a lot of them are plastic, like most of them are plastic. Um, spatulas, um, spoons, scissors. There are so many things. Dust pan and brushes, cups and plates, straws, scissors, hair brushes, toothbrushes. I mean, I could go on and on. These things are traditionally made of more sustainable items, wood, glass, stainless steel, um, and they're now just being made plastic, I suppose, because it's cheaper and people want more convenient things, which tends to be cheaper things. Um, and they don't care about the durability. Because they're cheap, they can just use them when they break, toss them aside, get a new pet, and it's just affecting our environment so much. So remember, before you buy anything plastic, um, see if you can buy something that's the same thing, but it's not plastic. And oftentimes it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, sometimes it's cheaper or the same price, but sometimes it might be a little bit more expensive, but it's cheaper in the long run because those things are more durable and they're going to last probably a lifetime. Whereas if you buy the plastic version, you're going to have to be like buying them over and over again. And it's going to be more expensive in the long run anyway. Um, just, it's really sad to see so many things now being made out of plastic. Plants, plastic plants. Number eight is plastic clothing, like polyester. It's made from melted down plastic, made into fibers, and we're wearing it on our bodies. Like, it's cheap, it's not durable, like I explained before, you're gonna have to rebuy it because it's gonna get holes in it, it's gonna tear, and it makes you smelly. Like, just having it against your skin, like that causes a lot of like BO because it's not breathable. So instead I opt for um, linen, cotton, you know, natural fibers that feel good, are durable, um, and you can wear them 10 times and they're not gonna make you smell. Hemp and bamboo are two of my favorite um, materials for clothing. They're so soft and feel so good against the skin and they're not as bad for the environment. Number nine is films on everything. You know that plastic film that you get? Um, 
I don't know, I feel like on everything, like on loads of um, fruit and vegetables, like over mushrooms, um, or on DVD cases, uh, I've seen them in shops, I don't know, you know how I feel about like buying DVDs anyway, um, but there, I just feel like there's that thin plastic film and everything, and I think it's overlooked a lot of the time, and people don't care about it as much, because when we think of plastic, we think of that like, hard plastic that you can knock on, and although that's terrible as well, the film actually is um, never recyclable, so sometimes the harder plastics are recyclable, which again, it could be a whole other video, that's recycling is actually incredibly damaging to the environment, um, but those films aren't even recyclable, and I feel like they're incredibly overlooked, because they're very thin and flimsy, and people, I don't know, don't think that they're as bad, but they are. And then when you see things like the DVDs, the thing that's made of plastic, put in a plastic box and then wrapped with plastic film, like enough already with the plastic. So the tenth thing is those plastic beads that you find in skincare. Um, I remember back when I was a teenager, I used to use this face scrub that had little plastic beads in it, and it's like pointless. It's meant to be like an exfoliator, but it's only incredibly cheap for them to manufacture because it's plastic and they want more money from you. And so they sell you like a face cleanser. Oh, and also you need to buy this one that's exfoliating that you need to use once a month, once a month. <laughs> and again, they just want more money from you to market you um, multiple products. And it's really bad for your skin. It's really bad for the environment. And it's completely pointless when we can use sugar scrubs, salt scrubs, um, coffee ground scrubs, oat scrubs, and we can make these all at home. And then when they're being flushed down in the sink into the oceans, they, um, they're natural and they're biodegradable and they'll not cause harm to the wildlife or to the oceans. And the eleventh thing is holiday decor, which we're going into the holiday season now, it's almost Halloween and then it's going to be Christmas. And there's so much plastic around, around this time of year especially. Um, I think, again, just because throw away items, you're going to use something for like a month at most and then throw it away so they make them plastic so they're cheaper, so people are more likely to buy them and they buy them, rebuy them every year rather than just like buying, you know, your holiday decor and then keeping that through the years, you want to buy new things. And it's just a money-making scheme again. So those have been the 11 things that um, are plastic that really royally get me riled up. Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and um, let me know in the comments what your like most annoying plastic items are that you see that really get you like, you know, irritated and really want to make a difference and um, tell people that we don't need all these plastic things. Let me know what they are um, in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.